hello there and welcome to another tutorial. My name is Tanmay Bakshi and this time we're going to be going over how you can use the discovery service in an iOS application in coded in Swift. So you know what, let's actually begin today. Uh, so what's going to be happening is we're going to be using Xcode, we're going to be using Swift uh, in order to create an iOS application uh, which can query the IBM Watson discovery service. Uh, and so without any further ado, again by the way though, if you haven't already, I'd really really recommend that you watch my previous video of discovery to which the link will be down in the description. Uh, and that video really just uh, shows you how you can actually use the discovery service uh, with it generally uh, and how you can train it and how you can test it and improve its performance and give it data that type of stuff but this video is going to be showing you how you can create a swift ios interface for that service in xcode so let's get right to it now shall we Alright, so let's begin with a quick demo of the application itself. So what are we going to be building today? Well, essentially, as you can see over here, I've got an iPhone simulator opened up here, uh, and this is the iPhone 7 Plus simulator. So let's say I were to search for something on Discovery. And uh, let's just send, uh, for the sake of simplicity, let's send the same request that we did in the first part of the video series. Uh, and let's send a request, let's say, when did Tanmay start coding? Okay. I'm going to click on the discover button and in just a moment you will see this UI table view populate with lots of search results from discovery and of course we can take a look at the top one which is the exact same one that we saw in part one which of course says meet Tammy Bakshi an Indian origin preteen from Brandon Canada who started coding when he was just five years old and of course this sentence is conveying a lot of information and this, as I said the same sentence I'm, uh, I'm I originate from India I'm a preteen I live in Brandon Canada and I started coding when I was five years old and it was able to extract that contextual similarity to my query in this document and it was able to give me my final answer. But now let's take a look at how I was actually able to build this application. Let's get to it, shall we? All right, so now let's take a look at the actual user interface of this application. So if I switch over here, as you can see, I've got Xcode open. And this is a very, very simple interface. As you can see, I've got our UI text field over here uh, with prototype text as search query, uh, which is where the user will type in their query. Of course, the discover button, which actually queries discovery with their query, and then a UI table view, which will, of course, uh, give you a list of the results that discovery has returned. Now, inside of this UI table view, I have a UI table view cell, and this is a prototype cell. Uh, and so, as you can see, this is a very simple cell, just I haven't even changed the height whatsoever. Uh, however, there is some neat stuff that goes on with this in the code. Uh, and so, what happens is each row, if I open up our demo back here, each row is of different height. So, of course, this article is of different height, this article is of different height, this one is much bigger, uh, and it's, uh, of course, this one might be smaller uh, but as you can see each row is of a different height and so essentially what happens is this UI table view and this label adjust different heights and widths uh, according to how big the article or result actually is. And so I've got some constraints set up on the label, uh, no constraints on the actual row though, uh, because of course, uh, or the cell technically, uh, because of course that uh, is done in the code, but this label has a few constraints on it using uh, of course uh, auto layout, and so uh, I will be leaving you a link to a Ray Wenderlich article which explains exactly how you can do that uh, in a very simple way actually. So that'll be down in the description. But now that you've seen the user interface of this application, I'd like to introduce you to the code of this application and how it's actually able to query discovery with your, well, query and give you back the results. All right, let's get to that part now. Thank you. 
All right, so now let's take a look at how the code of this application works. So if I go back to Xcode here, as you can see, I've got our main code open, the viewcontroller.swift file. Uh, and over here, I have, let's just start right off, uh, right after import UI kit, I've got an extension to the string class. And this is very simple. Uh, this is from my ass Tanley code, actually. Uh, and so this is an extension to the string class, which allows us uh, to URL encode a string very nicely and very quickly. So you can just do, like, for example, um, Hi there, this is a string with um, symbols. And you could URL encode this very nicely, just URL encoded. And it would be able to, um, if I just move that over here, see it would really easily be able to URL encode this string. And then you could put this into sort of like an MS URL or something of that sort. And so, of course, that's what that extension does. Uh, and next, we also have a class, though. This is our table view cell that we created. Uh, and so, very simply, it only has one label, the discover label, which is where the discovery search result will be. This is a UI label, uh, and of course, it is connected uh, to the actual label uh, with an IP outlet. Next, in our view controller, of course, we've got this uh, in, uh, sort of inheriting from UI view controller, but it also conforms to the UI table view data source uh, and UI table view delegate uh, protocols. Uh, and of course, we've got our IB outlets, the table view, which is UI table view, and our query field, which is our UI text field, which is what allows us to actually know what the user wants to query. Of course, we've got a data array, and this is the final data that Discovery returns back to us. And this is actually the really interesting code for the UI table view that I was talking about just uh, in the last part here. Uh, and so this uh, UI table view code essentially allows us to set the table view's row height to UI table view automatic dimension, which will allow us to automatically set the row height. But the estimated row height, this is just set to anything real at random, really, uh, 140. Again, the link to the Ray Wenderlich article, which explains mostly all of this, uh, is going to be in the description. So if you'd like to know more about how you can use, you know, auto layout uh, and how you can use it with UI table views to create self-adjusting rows of height, uh, then of course you, uh, you can check that link out in the description. Of course, though, I also have an IB action, and this is the discover IB action. And what's going to happen is here, I end editing, meaning if the keyboard is up on an iOS device, it'll go right back down, and I do force it to do that. Uh, and then I call a function called get data, uh, which will give us our which and will give it the query text, uh, so it knows what to give to discovery, and then we reload our table views data. But of course, I also have, I'm also uh, overriding the touches began function so that right as the user touches on the view, uh, I can end editing, meaning I can bring down the keyboard. But finally, the most important function of them all, the get data function. This will take our query as a string and it'll of course reset the data variable, which is our a final data that goes into the table view. It'll create a URL string, which uh, this is actually quite long, but this is this will essentially query Watson Discovery uh, with, of course, this long Watson Discovery query URL, uh, including lots of information about the actual collection that we want to query, but of course the query that we want to give it itself. Uh, and so, uh, of course, we are URL encoding this query using that string extension that I was talking about just a little while ago, and we're telling it to return 10 uh, results to us. We're giving it no offset, aggregation, filter, or return, though. Next, I'm turning this into a URL. As you know, with Swift 3, uh, so Apple has sort of just uh, stripped out all the NSs uh, from, you know, NS URL, NS data. Uh, and so, of course, we're just left with URL. And then I create a new data response constant uh, where I forcefully try to get the data uh, of that URL, the data in that URL. So it'll query that URL and give me that data. Of course, though, I'm also getting JSON, so I'm taking this data and I'm forcefully trying, uh, and so what I'm doing is I'm forcefully trying the JSON serializations, JSON object function, and I'm giving it the data response that I got from the URL. I'm telling it that I want some mutable containers as the options for this uh, JSON serialization, uh, and then finally, I am force uh, casting that to a string, any object dictionary.
<laughs> Once that's finally done, though, I'm creating a results constant, uh, and this will be uh, the results from our JSON. Uh, and this is uh, essentially a uh, this is one of the uh, keys that are that is returned from Watson Discovery itself when it returns its JSON. So results uh, will be uh, the array where uh, Watson holds all the uh, results as as the um, as it uh, sort of indicates. But then I forcefully cast that to an array of dictionaries, and those dictionaries are string and the object dictionaries. But then, since this is an array of dictionaries, I loop through this array of dictionaries, so every time I loop, I'm getting i, which is a dictionary itself, and then for every i I get, I append that i, uh, that i's text value, more specifically, uh, to the data variable. Now, once this getData function is called over here in our discover function, now remember, getData is synchronous, so it'll actually stop execution until it receives the data. And then I can run tableview.reloadData. And since this data variable uh, has all of the new data from Watson Discovery, I can actually tell the tableview, uh, first of all, my first uh, tableview class here would be uh, number of rows in section. And so I'm just telling it however many uh, rows are in or however many elements there are in data that's how many rows there will be in the table view so I'm just returning data.count and for the cell for row at index path uh, table view function here, I'm just creating the new cell. I'm uh, grabbing the prototype cell that we made in the view controller uh, or the actual main dot storyboard. I'm, cr I'm casting this to a table cell, which is the class that we created over here. I'm then setting the cells discover labels text to data index path dot row so that we can set uh, it to its respective result that we got from Watson Discovery. And then I'm returning turning that cell and that will finally be displayed on the on the screen for the user to see. And so of course, that's essentially how this application actually does work out. Of course though, that's actually going to be it for this video. It's quite simple, but of course it shows you how you can create an iOS application that that uh, queries the IBM Watson Discovery Service. But of course though, as I said before, the link to the part one of this video series will be in the description just in case you haven't watched it until now. But of course though, if you really, that's gonna be it for this video. But if you really do like this video, please consider leaving a like down below. But if you have any more suggestions, feedback, or questions, please do consider leaving them down in the comments below, emailing them to me at tagimani at gmail.com or tweeting them to me at tagimani. Of course, if you really do like my content and you want to see more of it, do consider subscribing to my channel as it really does help out a lot. And of course, that's going to be it for this video today. Thank you very much. Goodbye.